I was raised in what most people would describe as a typical middle-class household, two parents, a younger sister, and a small suburban home. To outsiders, we seem like a picture-perfect family. But anyone close to us would tell you there was always tension between my parents and me. The reason was simple. They adored my younger sister, Emma, and I was always the afterthought. But that wasn't always the case. I remember when we were kids. My parents were very loving and caring to both Emma and me. They showered us with affection, and why wouldn't they? We were a pretty smart pair, excelling at whatever came our way. We shared that golden period where nothing seemed to divide us. We were both enrolled in piano lessons, art classes and gymnastics, and our parents were equally proud of us. I never felt any tension back then, no subtle preference for one of us over the other. But things changed when I hit sixth grade. It started with just one test. It wasn't even a particularly important one, but I got a bad grade. The first bad grade of my life but it was enough for my parents to begin seeing me differently. I could tell something had shifted when my mother wouldn't look at me the same way she did, Emma, when she brought home another perfect score. The compliments they had once given me started to feel obligatory, while Emma's successes were celebrated with genuine pride. Suddenly, I was the loose string that could come undone at any moment and Emma was the one who could do no wrong. At first, I thought it was just a phase. Maybe I was being too sensitive. But it became impossible to ignore. If I made a mistake, no matter how small, it was held against me. If Emma made a mistake, it was brushed off or worse, excused. She's just having an off day, my father would say, while for me it was always, why can't you be more like Emma? That phrase haunted me throughout my teenage years. As we grew older, Emma blossomed into everything my parents had ever wanted in a daughter. She was smart, popular and outgoing. She was the class president, the homecoming queen, the girl everyone liked. I, on the other hand, became more introverted. I kept to myself, studied hard, and excelled in my own way, but it was never enough to compete with Emma. And soon enough, I stopped trying. By the time we were in high school, the differences in how we were treated had become glaringly obvious. Emma always got new clothes, her own car, and all the attention. When she needed help with homework, our parents would sit with her for hours, making sure she understood every detail. If I asked for help, it was either too late in the evening or they'd brush me off telling me to figure it out on my own. They had started treating me like an adult while coddling Emma like a princess. I learned early that if I wanted something, I'd have to work for it, while Emma had everything handed to her on a silver platter. Despite the imbalance in treatment, I tried to keep a relationship with Emma. After all, she was my sister and I loved her. But it became harder and harder to ignore her growing sense of entitlement. She seemed to revel in the attention, knowing she could get away with anything. It wasn't just my parents who adored her. Our friends, teachers, even strangers were captivated by her charm. She was the golden girl, and I was the shadow in the background. I began to wonder if anyone really saw me for who I was, or if I was just Emma's sister. The turning point came one summer after I graduated from high school. I had been accepted to a decent college on a partial scholarship, and I was excited to finally get out of the house and start fresh. I thought maybe, with some distance, my relationship with my parents would improve and that they would finally miss me when I was gone. I thought wrong. It was around this time that Emma started dating a boy named Jake. 
the star quarterback of our high school football team. He was handsome, popular, and came from a wealthy family. My parents loved him, of course. They treated him like the son they never had. Every weekend, Jake was over at our house and my parents would cook elaborate dinners just to impress him. It was clear they already envisioned a future where Emma and Jake would get married, settle down and give them the perfect grandchildren. Meanwhile, I was struggling to get through my first semester of college, working part time to cover the costs my scholarship didn't. I would come home on breaks exhausted and all I'd hear about was Emma and Jake's latest outing or how well Emma was doing in her classes. No one asked about me or how I was managing and to top that all off they would also make snarky remarks like why couldn't I find someone like Jake? Then came the accusation that would shatter what was left of our family dynamic. One weekend, during a break from college, I came home for a visit. Everything seemed normal until Emma's new bracelet, a gold charm bracelet Jake had given her, went missing. It was an expensive piece and Emma was distraught. My parents went into full panic mode, tearing the house apart to look for it. When they couldn't find it, Emma suggested that maybe I had taken it. At first, I thought she was joking, but she wasn't. She said she had seen me admiring the bracelet the night before and implied that I might have taken it out of jealousy. I was furious. I hadn't touched her bracelet. I hadn't even thought twice about it. But my parents didn't hesitate. They believed her without question. I protested, of course. I swore I hadn't taken anything, but my parents wouldn't listen. They were convinced I had stolen it out of spite. My father even said something along the lines of, We always knew you were jealous of Emma. That hurt more than anything they had ever said before. It was like all those years of trying to win their approval, of trying to be a good daughter, had meant nothing. They gave me an ultimatum, return the bracelet or leave the house. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I had no proof of my innocence, just my word, but that wasn't enough for them. They had already made up their minds, so I left. I packed my bags, walked out the door and didn't look back. I cut all ties with them, I didn't have a choice. I couldn't stay in the house where I was treated like a criminal for something I didn't do. I found a friend to stay with until I could get back on my feet. And that was the last time I spoke to my parents for years. In the years that followed, I struggled. Without my family's support, I had to figure everything out on my own. I juggled school and work, barely scraping by. There were days when I thought I wouldn't make it, but I did. I graduated, found a decent job, and slowly started building a life for myself. Meanwhile, I heard through mutual friends that Emma was thriving. She and Jake were still together, and she had landed a cushy job at some marketing firm my father had helped her get into. It seemed like nothing had changed for them. They were still the perfect family minus me. Five years passed before I heard from my family again. I had to build my life from ground zero. The only person to offer me any sort of help and moral support was my grandma, my dad's mother to be exact. Anyways, out of the blue, I received an invitation to my grandmother's Christmas dinner. I was surprised to say the least. My grandmother had always been the one person in the family who treated me fairly. Even after everything that had happened, she would send me the occasional birthday card or text to check in. But she never brought up my parents or tried to convince me to reconcile with them. So when I got the invitation, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go. But something inside me told me I should. When I arrived at the dinner, it felt like stepping into a time capsule. My parents, Emma and even Jake were there, along with a few other relatives. The tension was palpable. 
My parents greeted me stiffly and Emma acted like nothing had ever happened between us. It was as if they expected me to forget the past and play along with their perfect family act. The night was uncomfortable, but I got through it. Then, towards the end of the evening, my grandmother started handing out gifts. I wasn't expecting anything particularly significant, but when I opened the box, my heart nearly stopped. Inside the box was an old family heirloom, a gold locket, something that had been passed down for generations. It wasn't just any piece of jewellery. Whoever inherited this locket was considered the rightful heir to the family's assets. Grandma had received it from her father and now she was passing it directly to me, skipping over her son, my father, and all the other grandchildren, including Emma. It was a symbol of more than just tradition. It meant that one day, everything my grandparents owned, their house, their land, their savings, would be mine. I could see my parents' faces go pale when they realized what had just happened. Emma, who had always been the golden child, sat there in stunned silence. My parents quickly shifted gears, trying to hide their shock with forced smiles, but I could feel the tension in the room. The rest of the dinner was awkward, and soon after, my parents pulled me aside. Suddenly, they were apologetic, as if all those years of neglect and unfair treatment could be washed away with a few kind words. They brought up how Emma might be getting married soon and how they wanted me to be part of the family again for her sake. But I knew better. This wasn't about family or love. This was about money. The heirloom had always been a big deal in our family and now that I had it, they knew I would be the one inheriting everything that came with it. They weren't concerned about fixing the relationship because they cared about me. They were worried about what they stood to lose. My father even said, in a tone that felt more like a warning than an offer, that they were willing to forgive me for everything and start fresh. It was as if they had forgotten who had wronged who in the first place. Other relatives chimed in too, urging me to be reasonable. They kept saying that family is everything and that I should be connected with them no matter what had happened in the past. I could almost hear the cliches lining up. Sharing is caring, blood is thicker than water, and you don't want to be alone. Now, even though it's very clear what I should and should not do, all this pressure has got me overthinking this whole scenario. Did I want to be a part of this family again, knowing they only valued me because of what I now possessed? Could I forgive them, knowing that their sudden interest in me was born out of self-interest? Do you guys have any suggestions on this? If yes, I could really use some. After the Christmas party, I went back to my apartment feeling overwhelmed. It was hard to process everything that had happened. I tried to avoid my parents and relatives as much as possible for the rest of the evening, but their attempts to get close to me were relentless. My parents kept throwing guilty glances my way and Emma wouldn't stop smiling at me as if we were suddenly best friends but I knew their intentions were less about family and more about the family assets that were now tied to the heirloom I had been given. Their behaviour only made me want to distance myself further. The next few days were spent in deep thought. I realised I needed to have a proper conversation with Grandma. The brooch was important, not just symbolically, but practically, it meant I would inherit the family's assets. That wasn't something I was actively looking for. But now that it was on my plate, I needed clarity. I wasn't ready to be tangled in family wealth and legacy without understanding what it all really meant. When I met with my grandmother, I was still nervous about bringing up the subject. 
I thanked her for trusting me with the heirloom, and then I asked her directly what it all meant. I wanted to be transparent. I didn't want the family assets, if it was going to drag me back into the chaos I had worked so hard to escape. I would use it responsibly if it came my way, but it wasn't my priority. Grandma listened patiently and then told me something I hadn't fully understood before. She had been watching everything unfold for years. She had seen how the family had grown distant from her, especially after my parents and I had our falling out. She explained that she knew the family dynamics were messed up and that I had been unfairly treated, particularly by Emma and my parents. She even knew about how I had struggled to support myself while in college, working multiple jobs just to stay afloat while Emma was always given a free pass. Grandma explained that she hadn't interfered all these years because she believed people needed to live their own lives. But when she saw how things had turned out, how I had been mistreated yet still managed to build something for myself, she knew that her assets needed to be passed on to someone responsible. Someone who would not just take it for granted or squander it. And that's why she chose me. She had already made a will and my name was on it. I was surprised by her honesty. It wasn't just about the heirloom anymore. It was about trust. Grandma believed I would handle everything with care and that responsibility felt both heavy and important. She assured me that this wasn't about rewarding me for what I had gone through, but about placing the family's future in hands she knew would do right by it. And as much as it felt strange to suddenly be the one in this position, I couldn't help but feel a sense of validation. All those years of being the forgotten daughter suddenly didn't matter. Grandma had seen the truth, and that meant more than anything. However, even though this cleared up a lot, it also complicated things. The inheritance was still a looming presence and I knew my parents and Emma were going to try everything they could to weasel their way back in. Now that they knew what was at stake, they weren't going to let it go easily. Update 2 Hello Reddit people, I'm back with an update. And things have gone from bad to worse. If you've been following along, you know my family situation is a mess. But I thought going back to school would give me some peace. I was wrong. So much has happened and honestly, I need to vent about it before I lose my mind. After the Christmas disaster where my parents and Emma basically begged for the family inheritance, I returned to my apartment hoping to escape the chaos. For a few days, I managed to drown myself in work, just trying to distance myself from the constant calls and texts from my family. But of course, that peace didn't last long. The constant messages didn't stop, not just from my parents and Emma, but from my extended family as well. Relatives who hadn't spoken to me in years suddenly felt it was their duty to mediate the situation. They were all parroting the same lines. Family is everything. Don't let money tear you apart. And my favorite, you're being selfish. What made it worse was that these relatives didn't even know the full story. They weren't around when my parents disowned me or when I had to scrape together money for rent and food during college while Emma was living her perfect life with everything handed to her. They didn't care about the years of being neglected. They only cared about what they had heard from my parents, who were now conveniently playing the victims. I felt like I was being suffocated by their opinions. I thought I could just ignore it all and focus on my job, but then things took a shocking turn. One afternoon, completely out of the blue, my parents and Emma showed up at my apartment. Yes, you read that right. They came uninvited to my place. It was like they were on a mission, and that mission was to force me into some kind of reconciliation on their terms, of course. 
They were banging on the door, calling my name, and I could hear my mom crying from the hallway. I froze. My friend, who had been staying with me for a few months, looked terrified, and I had no idea what to do. When I opened the door, my parents started pleading with me right there in front of my friend. My mom was sobbing, saying how they couldn't lose me and how we needed to fix this. My dad kept saying they were willing to forgive me for everything, as if I was the one who had done something wrong. Meanwhile, Emma stood there with her fake concerned look, but I could see right through her. She was less interested in reconciliation and more worried about what would happen if I didn't agree to share the inheritance. I tried to keep things quiet, whispering to them that this wasn't the place or time to have this conversation, but they weren't listening. My mom practically pushed past me, trying to get into the apartment while my dad stood in the doorway, refusing to leave. They kept talking over me, saying how Emma would get married soon and how the family needed to be whole again before that happened. They made it sound like I was the one tearing the family apart, all while trying to force me into agreeing to give up part of the future inheritance that, mind you, I don't even officially have yet. The whole scene was humiliating. My neighbours started coming out of their rooms, watching the chaos unfold. I was trying my best to handle it quietly. But the longer they stayed, the louder they got. My mom was on her knees begging me to forgive them, while Emma stood there looking smug like she knew they'd wear me down eventually. I was trapped, and I had no idea what to do. I tried telling them to leave, but they weren't budging. Finally, after what felt like hours of pleading, I couldn't take it anymore. I called the security, who thankfully arrived quickly. They were polite at first, asking my parents to leave, but my parents refused. That's when security had to get firm, telling them if they didn't leave, they'd be forced to call the cops. It was embarrassing on a whole new level. My parents finally backed down, but not before my mom dramatically said I was abandoning my family in front of everyone. As if that wasn't enough, Emma took it a step further. After leaving, she sent a mass text to several of my friends telling them that I had abandoned her and my parents. She made it sound like I was the villain in all of this, leaving out the part where they had disowned me for something I didn't even do. Some of my friends were understandably confused, so I had to explain the whole situation. It was exhausting, and I couldn't believe how far Emma was willing to go just to make herself look like the victim. Now, I'm not sure what to do. I haven't spoken to my parents since that incident, and I'm trying to move on, but their desperation has me constantly looking over my shoulder. I feel like I'm being pushed into a corner, expected to give in just to make everyone else happy, but I can't forget how they treated me. At the same time, the pressure is overwhelming. Part of me wonders if it will ever stop or if I'm going to have to deal with this for the rest of my life. Right now, I just want to focus on myself and my future, but it feels like my family is determined to drag me back into their mess. Update 3. Hello again, Reddit people. Buckle up because things have spiraled even further since my last update. After the apartment incident where my parents and Emma showed up unannounced, things got even messier and I had to do a lot of damage control, especially with my friends. First of all, Emma's little stunt of texting my friends put everyone in a really awkward position. I had to explain the entire family drama from the start, which was honestly exhausting. What made it even weirder was how Emma had gotten my friend's numbers in the first place. None of them had given it to her, so I was just as confused as they were. It was creepy, to say the least. My friends were supportive, but they were also understandably freaked out. They didn't know what to believe at first because Emma's message painted me as this heartless person who had turned my back on my family. Thankfully, 
After I explained the truth and showed them the pattern of manipulation, they understood. But it was still embarrassing having to air out all this dirty laundry just to clear my name. Then, just when I thought I could finally take a breather, my grandma stepped in. Apparently, word of the apartment incident had made its way to her, and she was not happy about how things had escalated. But instead of confronting my parents directly, Grandma decided to deal with the relatives who had been running their mouths about me. Without me even asking, she met with several of my cousins, uncles and aunts to set the record straight. She's always been the calm but no-nonsense type and she handled it in her usual quiet but effective way. It turns out my relatives had been fed a completely different version of events. My mom and dad had apparently told them that the reason they disowned me was because they had found the gold bracelet, the one Emma claimed I stole, hidden in my drawer. They said that's when they realized I was no longer trustworthy and cut ties with me. When grandma told me this, I couldn't believe it. That had never happened. There was no bracelet found in my drawer. In fact, I had never even seen the bracelet in question. The whole thing was a lie. Grandma was just as shocked as I was. She had assumed that my parents had their reasons for treating me the way they did, but hearing this lie changed everything for her. She didn't hold back when she confronted the rest of the family, telling them how they had been spewing baseless accusations about me without even knowing the truth. She explained the real reason I was disowned that Emma had lied and my parents had sided with her without even giving me a chance to defend myself. My relatives were flawed. They had no idea they had been part of such a twisted narrative. Once the truth came out, I started hearing things from different family members that I hadn't known before. Apparently, my parents had been hiding a lot more than just their favoritism towards Emma. One of my uncles mentioned that my dad had taken out a second mortgage on the house to fund some of Emma's extravagant wedding plans, which was a huge financial strain on them. Another cousin let it slip that Emma had been a total nightmare during wedding preparations, throwing tantrums left and right because things weren't perfect enough. But the biggest bombshell was about Emma and Jake. I hadn't heard much about their relationship recently, but apparently it wasn't going well. Jake had left Emma. I was shocked at first, but the more I learned, the more it made sense. According to my relatives, Jake had gotten fed up with Emma's constant tantrums and unrealistic expectations. She had been treating him like one of her doormats and he was tired of it. But there was another layer to it. Jake had also started to realize that the promises of family wealth weren't going to materialize as easily as he thought. My parents had hinted at helping them financially, but with the drama over the heirloom and inheritance, it became clear that things were a lot more complicated. He saw the writing on the wall and decided to bail before getting in deeper. This news spread like wildfire through the family and I couldn't help but feel this mixture of emotions. Part of me felt sorry for Emma despite everything she had done, but another part of me felt validated. For so long, I had been made to feel like the outcast, the problem. And now the cracks in Emma's perfect life were starting to show. It was like everything they had tried to cover up was unraveling in front of them and there was nothing they could do to stop it. Somewhere in the midst of all this chaos, my relatives, the same ones who had been so quick to judge me based on my parents' lies, started reaching out. They were regretful, apologizing for the harsh comments and judgments they'd thrown at me when they believed I had stolen the bracelet. It was strange seeing their sudden change of heart now that the truth was out. They kept asking for forgiveness, telling me they only wanted what was best for the family. But honestly, after everything, I wasn't sure I wanted anything to do with them anymore. I couldn't help but think 
If it was this easy for them to turn on me based on nothing but a story, what's stopping them from doing it again? If my parents had been able to so quickly switch their opinions in the past, siding with Emma and disowning me, what guarantee did I have that they wouldn't do the same thing if another situation came up? It felt like I was always going to be walking on eggshells around them, constantly wondering if their loyalty to me was genuine or just convenient. For now, I'd rather take a break from all of them and focus on myself. Let them deal with their own mess without dragging me back into it. After all of this, my parents also reached out again, but this time their tone was different. They were no longer demanding or guilt-tripping me. They were almost apologetic, but I could see through it. They were still focused on the money, still hoping to smooth things over, just enough to get their hands on the future inheritance. They didn't care about mending our relationship for real. They cared about keeping up appearances and securing financial stability, especially now that Emma's future wasn't looking as secure as they had hoped. I haven't responded to them, and honestly, I'm not sure I will. This entire experience has been a harsh reminder of how toxic my family can be, and I'm not ready to open that door again, even if they come bearing apologies. For now, I'm focusing on myself and the future I want to build on my own terms without the baggage of their manipulation and lies hanging over me. That's enough for now, Reddit. Thanks for all your advice and support along the way. It's been a rough ride, but I feel like I'm finally starting to see things more clearly. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.